everyone. My hair is a wreck. I'm a wreck. And we're gonna film this video anyway. It is Walt Disney Wednesday, and I just watched the animated Cinderella this morning. Now, I am a huge, huge fan of the live-action Cinderella reboot in 2015, I think is when it came out. Absolutely loved it. And I always liked the story, like the fairy tale that's based off of, but throughout all, especially the Disney Princess movies, I don't, I didn't really remember this one that much. And part of it is because my mom didn't like it, so she wouldn't play it when I was little because she didn't want to see it or listen to it. So I really haven't seen it. I feel like all other Disney princess movies I've seen like a dozen times. And this one, I just haven't. So I was really interested to go back and watch it again. And the live action did it right. I will generally side on the animation movie over live action because I'm a huge fan of animation. I love the art form, especially when it's drawn. And this is proclaimed to be one of Walt Disney's favorite movies that he worked on. The transformation from her rags into her iconic dress was one of his favorite pieces of animation that they ever worked on. But it's kind of not that good. And if that seems harsh, I get it. It's gonna be really interesting when I get to the point where I'm watching the live action remakes of classic films. There's some where I didn't really see the point of why it was remade, but this was one where not only do I get it, they really exceeded at it. Now, this is the golden age of animation. I think every frame just looks like a painting or watercolor, just work of art. It's absolutely beautiful. You can see even just the technical steps up from Snow White. Like just Cinderella's face looks really good. There's just a lot about it visually that is absolutely stunning. Unfortunately, it's not great story-wise. When it opens up, it spends about two minutes, does the very classic open with a fairy tale book and does the Once Upon a Time voiceover. And it kind of skips over a lot of the story in that minute voiceover where she's like, oh, uh, Cinderella had a widowed father who married a stepmother and then he died. And it's one of those things where, oh, I would have liked to have seen that in the movie. I bet that was really dramatic and interesting. But instead we just start when Cinderella wakes up and just kind of sings. I mean, her, her classic song, but... Eh. And it takes a long time to get to the point where Cinderella interacts with the stepsisters and the stepmother. And the first 10 minutes, she's kind of talking about, oh, how she wishes her life, maybe her dreams will come true. But it's like, girl, you talk to animals. <laughs> and they talk back to you. And they help putting on your clothes and sing with you and are highly pleasant. It's like, it doesn't seem like your life is that bad until she starts interacting with her stepmother and stepsisters, but it's like 20 minutes before you see that happen. So that's kind of, uh -uh. that's the crux of the movie. Her life sucks because these evil, malicious people are just cruel to her for no reason, but she stays kind and positive throughout it. And that's why the prince falls in love with her. That's supposed to be kind of the... The, the thesis of the film, if you will. But not seeing it, I don't know. It was just like, your life is fine, you're chill. <laughs> um, and there was a lot of what I kept thinking were like Tom and Jerry moments, because it would just be the mice, you know, Gus Gus and the other, the other ones, and Lucifer the cat just having their little antics. But it's like, I'm not here for the mice. I'm not here for the cat. If I wanted to watch Tom and Jerry, I'd watch Tom and Jerry. I want to see some dramatic bickering in beautiful animated form between Cinderella, her stepsisters, and how she gets to the ball. That's what I want to see. And a lot of screen time is dedicated to the freaking mice. 
And I know my mom hates them. I don't hate them, but I also couldn't understand them half the time. I just had no clue what they were saying. There's something with the way they manipulated their voices. I, I should have looked into it, but I have no idea how they did that, if that was something the voice actors did on their own, or if that's something they manipulated afterwards. But I had no clue what they were saying half the time. I also just, I don't know, I just didn't care. And then what was also kind of annoying is the parts that seemed really important and that I was into felt really short. So I would have loved to actually see more moments, be moments, moments between Cinderella and her stepsisters and the stepmother because when those interactions happened, they were all really cruel and mean and I was just, you poor thing, you poor thing, Cinderella. I had a lot of sympathy for her, but there was a surprising lack of those scenes where it was like, okay, I could have far less mice and far more stepmother. Because when those scenes happened, there was a punch. The Whoever voiced the stepmother was incredible. She had a real maliciousness in the way that she spoke to Cinderella that I found very effective. And then there's the absolutely beautiful sequence where the mice make her dress and she thinks that she can go to the ball. And it was when they presented it to her, it was it was very touching because she was so sure that she wasn't going to be able to go and it was like oh yeah you get to go girl get it on go have fun and she gets downstairs and when the stepmother very subtly gets the girls riled up to the point that they start stripping her pearls and her sashes and just ripping her dress apart it was vicious it was brutal i was stunned by it honestly because it, I forgot how really cruel that part was so that was really effective I wish there was more of that and then when she goes out and her godmother comes in does the bippity boppity boo adorable super sweet and then when she turned her rags into that gorgeous gown something that I remember the I'm talking something I remember the live action movie doing that was amazing is that they spent time on that. Where the animated one, I get it, it was still beautiful, the dress is stunning and it has that little pretty glitter, exaggerated glitter on the dress that was just lovely. But the live action spent like a good minute watching the dress transform. You know, I can't hold the animated film to modern standards, but it was something that kind of stood out to me. And then when she got to the ball, oh my goodness, the king, he was a delight. He was very fun to watch. He was just so over the top. And the fact that he was so into his son having a wife and grandkids was very adorable. But they spent so much time on him and the Grand Duke, I think, that we, there, I think the prince in Cinderella says one line or like has one bit where he even talks. That's something where it's like, but you're important. You're very, you know, you know this is a love story, but you spend no time with the prince. They do the same thing in Snow White. I don't know what the deal is. The classic Disney movies just do not spend time with the princes, but it is very jarring because then Cinderella comes in and she and the prince dance and walk together. I don't know, there's a song over that whole sequence and it's beautiful, but you never hear them talk to each other until it strikes midnight and Cinderella has to leave. But it's like, why do you like him? Because you dance and then they tried playing it off like Cinderella did not know that that was the prince. Like, oh, what other guy looks like that? What other guy dresses like that? And that whole like hour, or even if it was just a half hour that you guys were together, that you guys were alone. He never brought up that like, oh, my father was so kind to throw this ball to me. You're so beautiful. What's your name? I don't know. It was just such a, like the whole movie comes to that point. And it was just a weird, it was weird, weird. Cinderella loses her shoe, she comes back home, there's that royal decree because the prince is determined to find her that they're going to go around town and put the shoe on all the maidens 
in the city, town, province, until they find the one that got away and the stepmother realizes that Cinderella is the girl and locks her in the tower. I remember the few times that I've ever seen this movie. I felt like that was a way bigger moment when I was a kid that I was way more like freaked out by that. But it's not as freaky as I remember. It doesn't last very long. The sequence where the stepdaughters are putting on the shoe and their feet are too big is, it, it, it's funny. But I think just on a story level, it's kind of annoying that the mice are the ones who save the day, basically. And again, I shouldn't be throwing modern standards onto a very old classic film, but I wish Cinderella was a little bit more proactive in trying to get herself to escape. She has a window, either that'd be climbing out or calling out. She must know the Duke is there. I think she heard him. She could have been like, hey, 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 mother, I'm up here, da da da. Or that, again, the prince was more involved. The fact that the duke was the one going around putting the slippers on people and not the prince I found really weird too because it's like, wouldn't the prince want to go and see these girls because more than the slipper fitting, wouldn't he be like, I recognize your face. I stared at it for a few hours. <laughs> I don't know. So then the mice get her the key and just there are all these action, action, all these sequences between the mice. There's the mice just getting away from Lucifer in the beginning. The mice getting the trimmings for her pink dress and getting away from Lucifer. The mice getting away from Lucifer when they're getting the key. It's just, it's really repetitive. All the sequences are really long and they just, they don't do anything for me. I wasn't particularly entertained. I didn't care. I just, I really did find this movie lacking. Because by the end of it, I was like, well, that was beautiful. But visually, I can see why it's so iconic from her dress to the castle. It is such a absolutely gorgeous movie. Even as a child, granted, I don't think we owned the VHS. Yeah, the VHS. But even if we did, I don't think it would be one that I would naturally go towards because there just wasn't that much Cinderella, there just wasn't that much conflict, there just wasn't that much interaction between her and the prince that I think would really ground and elevate the movie. There's just a lot of mice running around. It was almost more about the mice than Cinderella. So anyway, that's another Walt Disney Wednesday. Um, I think next week I'm going to be watching Sleeping Beauty, which I'm so excited about. That was one of my favorites when I was a girl. So it's going to be really fun and I hope to see you guys next time. And tomorrow is Avatar The Last Airbender Day, episode four. So stay tuned guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.